Okay, GB1, your little gold friends over there snapping is getting a little concerning. Well, he wasn't doing that prior to me saying that we were building the Infinity Gauntlet today. We do have a pretty catchy theme song, uh, but still, I think we should have Deadpool put those cameras up he was talking about. You never can be too careful, especially when you're building the most powerful weapon in the universe. Hey everyone, and welcome to Group Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and this is my friend, GB1. In this episode, we're going to be building the most powerful weapon in the universe, the Metal Earth Avengers Endgame Infinity Gauntlet. And you want to know the best part? You don't have to kill your friends and family to be able to get the Soul Stone. I think that's actually a pretty good thing, GB1. Some would consider that a feature. And if you don't have means of space travel, you can also head over to GrooveBuilders.ca. We got all kinds of really cool models on there, at great prices, with fast shipping to the United States and Canada. If you use the promo code SHIPTHIS with orders over $70 Canadian or $50 US, you also get two free day shipping. That's a pretty sweet deal. Well. I think so, GB1. Now, the Infinity Gauntlet is a pretty sweet little model, but with its gauntlet shape, you know there's going to be some interesting detail for us to form. What are the tricky bits? What tools do you need to build them? And why does everyone keep complaining about these stones? Those are some good questions, and we're going to get the answers. Let's get down to the workbench and check out our package. and 44 parts to build our Infinity Gauntlet. I think the Dwarves of Nivellir would be very impressed and maybe slightly offended. I know using a Neutron Star is cool and all, but some of us just don't have the time for that technology. The first thing we're going to take a look at is forming our Infinity Stones and how to actually attach them on correctly. Next, we'll be talking about adding detail like our thumb ring and fingers. And finally, we'll talk about the lower part of the Gauntlet and how to get a really nice shaping. If you want to see the full build of our Infinity Gauntlet, so you can get all of the details that we miss in this episode, make sure to check out the description down below. Next up, we have our tools. Uh, what tools do we need to build an Infinity Gauntlet? Uh, I doubt this will come in handy. Let's ask our resident tool expert, Timothy. Hello, I am Timothy the Tool Expert. The Dwarves of Nivadalir use a neutron star to make this divine weapon of extermination. To build this gauntlet, you will need a spare star to sacrifice, and... Oh, uh, Timothy, the uh, model version, please. Oh. <coughs> For this model, you will need... Nippers. Tweezers. Fondant tools. And dapping punches. Great work there, Timothy, and thanks for the correction. We really don't need anyone trying to harness the power of a sun. Again told that kid to eat the bananas, but no, too much potassium. As always, these are just our recommendations, and you really don't need anything but nippers and tweezers to get the job done. But of course, having the right tools will make your life a lot easier. All right, group builders, we looked at our instructions and we have all of our tools. There's only one thing left to do. Hey, thanks for making it so far into the video. Last episode, I asked everyone out there what I should do with those Stormtrooper models, and a lot of you suggested I should do a giveaway here on the channel. I think that's a great idea, but I'm gonna come up with a few other things I think I wanna give away, including some stuff I've been working with my 3D printer, which you can hear in the background there. Make sure you keep your eyes on my Instagram. Make sure you like the videos and subscribe so you don't miss any kind of things that come along with this contest. All right, group builders, let's get back to the video where we're building the Infinity Gauntlet. The Avengers Endgame Infinity Gauntlet is a model that might look intimidating, but really is not all that bad. The first thing we need to talk about is forming all the Infinity Stones that go onto the glove. For that, we start with step one. Looking at parts 2, 3, 4, 5, and 21, we can see the stones need to be made into dome, eggy kind of shapes. There are tons of ways for us to do this, like using a cake fondant tool like I did here. But uh, while that's a good way of doing things, it's not really that easy. I found the best way to bend our stones was actually just using old fashioned tweezers to get the job done. All we need to do is start by grabbing one of the edges and then slowly over multiple bends connect the seams of the part. After matching all of the edges the best you possibly can, you should have a nice egg-ish kind of shape. 
Do this a few more times and you're ready to attach them to part one. As we press our tabs into the insertion holes, it's important that we secure the tabs as flat as possible to part one. Later, there's gonna be parts going right behind here. And if these tabs aren't flush, you're not gonna have a good connection. Part eight is formed very similar to the other stones, but because it's bigger, we need to do a little bit more forming. I use my cake tool again to get a really nice even round shape, but make sure to take your time with this because this is the first stone everyone's going to see when they look at your model. When everything looks really nice, make sure you go to each edge and give them a nice little crimp. That'll make sure that all those little sharp edged petals kind of bend in together. I think this is looking pretty good, but now we need more detail. For that, we need to move on to our second point. The Infinity Gauntlet has a few parts that require us to put our tabs through multiple pieces. This can be tricky if our parts aren't perfectly matching. Yes, we are still on step one. It's a bit of a doozy, that one. And uh, looking at parts seven to nine, we can see just that. I recommend lining up part seven and part one the best you possibly can before securing part seven with a nice flush bend. Now pick up the entire assembly and look at it with some light. Can you see clearly through those holes? If you can, you're ready to attach part eight and nine. We've touched on part eight already, so let's move on to adding the other pieces onto our glove. The tabs on part nine may need to be slightly bent inward to get a nice flush connection. Once we've got the tabs through, it's time to secure them with a flush bend. Nice work. Now for the tricky bits. After forming our fingers, we'll need to attach them to part 20. Make sure to attach the fingers one at a time. And when attaching details this close together, it's always a good idea to put the tabs closest to the other detail in first. This saves you from blindly trying to put a tab into insertion hole that you can't see. Okay, our fingers are looking nice and secure. Now we can grab part one and begin to wrap it around part 20. I started shaping part one with my kick tool here to get some nice definition in the glove. Then when I was happy, I slowly bent the part into shape. I had a really hard time getting my tabs into the insertion hole with part 20 and unfortunately had to secure the tabs as I went. I would normally not recommend this method because it can cause creasing in the metal or the tabs themselves to break if you're trying to stretch them too far. But in this case it worked out just fine and it might be necessary to get this part secured. Lastly, who likes pancakes? Well that's great because bending the thumb ring will have you thinking about pancakes the whole time. Okay, maybe just me then. Nevertheless, after making our ring, we need to attach it onto our glove. To do this, we need part 30. This is where things can get a little bit interesting. We need to actually match the seams like we've done before with other parts like this to create almost a concaved part. After getting the right shape, we have to almost weave part 30 into part one we have to make sure that the little bit here on the top of part one is just above part 30 right in the middle. Talk about a struggle and a mouthful. Make sure that little bit of detail is correct first, then attach your tabs from the top down. Trying to do this another way might bend you into a corner that you don't want to go to, so be very careful. Our glove is looking more and more complete. Let's get that bottom half done. The third and final thing I want to touch on is adding the details onto part 31 and getting that gauntlet shape. For the most part, adding the little bits of detail on from part 32 on from 38 are really straightforward. Just like our stones, once we place them onto part 31, we need to make sure that all the tabs here are bent flush. This will be helpful for us later when we go to put the stand into place. Now we need to bend part 31. I use my dapping set here to help me get an almost Kona shape. If you don't have something like this at home, a marker or glue stick would be a great alternative. Push into part 31 with your tool and roll the part back and forth until we have a really nice shape. Now we need to put a curve onto part 36, but we have to be careful to match that curve with the glove. Too much of one and that part's gonna stand out too little of one and well it's gonna look very shoddy so we have to make sure that we match that curve as perfectly as possible I used my kick tool again but a marker will do just fine here too secure these tabs with a flush bend and we're ready to put it all together just like that we have our infinity gauntlet nice and there we have it the Avengers Endgame Infinity Gauntlet from Metal Earth 
This build was really awesome to build, and quite frankly, pretty easy too. Sure, there are some difficult bits, like the first couple of times you're trying to round these stones, but once you do one or two, it really is pretty simple to follow. Now, when it comes to doing some of the later detail, like wrapping the hand around, yes, that's when this model can get a little bit tricky. And if you don't have the right tools, I can understand how some people might struggle with the uh, little closing of the hand. But overall, this model is actually a really good one to start with if you're just getting into metal models. Yes, again, there are some tricky bits, but if you take your time and, of course, a little bit of patience, you should be able to have a pretty awesome looking build. All right, group builders, that brings us to the end of our show. I had a really good time building the Infinity Gauntlet with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we have all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Want to help the channel grow? Check out GrooveBuilders.ca. We've got all kinds of really cool models on there at great prices with fast shipping to the United States and Canada. All right, now I gotta go put this in a safe place, especially away from anyone snapping. Until next time, Groove Builders, keep building.